Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and Kerbals of all ages. Today, again, like, well, the other two videos today, this will be the third and final installment of my So You Want to Be a Jet Fighter series, and we'll be going over what is, you know, not exactly what is Fighter Mafia, but building a jet the Fighter Mafia way. Now, we will, uh, we will eventually go into building a jet, but to start off, we will start with a Fighter Mafia jet, which is, again... As I featured this in my last video. Uh, I would say probably the best of the series, the F-15. It's the fastest, it's generally the most maneuverable. Um, anyone who likes an F-14 Tomcat, you know, I, I think... I love a Tomcat as much as everyone else, but it has lots and lots of problems. It's very heavy. It was... had had a tendency to, you know, engines fail and things spin out and then Goose dies because all that. Yeah, fun fact! The, uh... Goose's death scene in Top Gun highlights some of the most prominent issues of the of the F-14. The most notable three is uh, the wide engine spacing, causing lots of months of asymmetric thrust. Which again, the engines were incredibly high, highly powered. Like actually, here, if, let's see if uh, this, this probably won't do it, but let's see if we can do it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to do on this one. I'll actually have to pull out my F-14 if I can have to dig it up somewhere and actually do a demonstration. But yeah, that the uh, engines on the F-14 were inc well, I don't say incredibly unreliable, but they were very much prone to compressor stalls, which what hap is what happened in Top Gun. So again, bad things happen. But back to fighter mafia stuff. So again, this is an F-15 built by McDonnell Douglas, now now Boeing, my hometown. Love to see them. Love to work on them. Yeah, I'm trying to get a job at Boeing with the F-15. Uh, the F-15X program, that'd be dope. Even though it will probably, like, this aircraft is definitely reaching the end of its life. It's crazy that the Air Force is still like, we would like a new variant. Now, they won't be procuring as, you know, it's made like, you know, it's the F-15C or the, the Strike Eagle, but it's more of a stopgap because the F-35 is underperforming and not exactly ready because software. So, yes. What makes this aircraft, you know, probably so, so unique, and this well, uh, just to kind of as a you know some numbers to start out with, the F-15 has the highest kill death ratio of any fighter aircraft in history. It has over it's like 160 plus kills, mostly with the uh, Israeli Air Force, but it has never been lost in combat. You know, F-18s. Uh, well, actually, I don't think I've, I don't know if F-18s on. F-16s for sure have definitely been lost to like MiGs. There's actually a case. It was like a year ago, where a <laughs> I think it was like a Pakistani F-16 was... Oh, what the heck just happened? We're up. I, oh, it just exploded. And gravity is now being... Oh, no. We are not defiling gravity. All right. But yeah, where a Pakistani F-16 was lost to like a MiG-21, which for those who don't know what a MiG-21 is, it's the crappy little fighter that, you know, was easily taken, you know, that was shot down in Vietnam. That was kind of like the, the common brain. Now, granted, they are pretty dangerous. They're small and dangerous little planes, which actually is... It's kind of like, I would say, if you really had to pair up a, you know, pair a MiG to, a, you know, an American aircraft, a MiG-21 and an F-16 go pretty well together. The F-15's counterpart would probably be, like, a more advanced uh, Sukhoi, like a Terminator or something, and then, like, a MiG-29 would be, like, an F-18. And Tomcat, there is... There isn't really, like... It's, it's actually really a MiG-31 for a Tomcat, but it's not as fast. So again, the F-15, what makes it, uh, so, <laughs> lots and lots of blabber, so, getting into it, what makes a fighter mafia aircraft fighter mafia, and what were the, you know, the three tenants I, I mentioned, I kind of hinted in the last one, are thrust, wing loading, and weight. Now, the F-15, well, it is an incredibly heavy fighter, it really, really shines in the first two, again, you know, this aircraft, as you see, it doesn't well, the thrust vector lags a little bit. That's, I mean, for highly maneuverable aircraft, that's pretty standard. And this air, air, aircraft is pulling, like, probably, yeah, 103 Gs at one point was our max G. And that's not just, like, re-entry. Now, granted, that was probably, like, when I, like, I slightly pulled up and going 1,000 meters per second. But again, this plane in pretty standard flight can pull massive Gs. As you can see right now, we are... Just a small low speed turn was pulling 10 Gs. And high speed, I get this thing going supersonic. 
or the wing loading on this one is able to accommodate that. Like this, like if you look at it, it, you know, again, it doesn't snap back. It's able to really kind of continuously get that. Because you see, a lot of planes, they'll be able to pull the needle up, but it'll go right back down. In that case, the only it went back down after we slowed down. We lost like half our speed from pulling a high speed 180. So again, you know, wing loading, I would say, is the biggest thing. I feel it's also one of the most kind of underrated design features. I feel people are like, oh, wait, I want really, really small wings. And I will say, I, I started doing that. I wanted to have small wings as possible. Like, I want to reduce drag. I want to... You want to make it light. I want to make it nimble. But what makes your plane really nimble is its wings. It's, you know, its ability to lift the plane up. Now, number two, and you know, what really helps that is engines. You know, if you have really powerful engines, it doesn't matter how fat your plane is, they're going to be able to push it along and get it up to high speed. Like this aircraft can accelerate very, very fast off the start. You see right here, it's. It can pull about 2 G's of acceleration. That's a pretty nice kick in the pants if you know, if you kick into afterburns type of thing. That's what you need. So then finally, weight. This aircraft actually carries a decent amount of fuel in it, but... You know, weight, I would say, is really the uniting factor in that. It's what's gonna kind of, you know... Weight is, well, well you know... <clears throat> that's what affects you know, your thrust to weight ratio and really so another thing going on how all these theory will, things will come together and really are in two cases let's say uh your wing loading which i guess it's more kind of going to lift and uh your thrust to weight ratio no thrust to weight ratio again is you know how much thrust you put out compared to the weight of the aircraft and that's a good comparison measure because you've got plenty of large aircraft that have produced tons of thrust but they're also going to be very, very heavy, so they may not have the thrust-to-weight ratio of smaller aircraft. As you see, in this case, it's definitely plus one. This is aircraft, you know, it's ex this airplane, airplane is accelerated upward. So that is fantastic. The other one, again, is wing loading. So that's, again, as I've mentioned in a few previous times, is how much weight do your, you know, do, do your wings have to carry you? How much, you know, generally per square foot type thing. And generally, the smaller you have in that, you know, the more your wings, the more your effect your wings will have to do. Because if you have a very, very, you have uh, wings that are very highly loaded, they're going to be carrying a lot of weight, and they have to put out a, you know, a lot of lift to be able to kind of get that plane to turn. Now, if your wings aren't very loaded, like in this plane, you're pretty maneuverable. You can do, uh, you know, they don't have to work as hard. So again, those are really the. Those are kind of the things we will be taking into consideration. So now, let's get to the build. Now I'm thinking for our design, we'll just do a standard, more kind of conventional, uh, standard kind of more delta wing design. I say conventional, more delta wing, just because it's, it's simple, it's easy. But at the same time, we'll focus on maneuverability. We'll actually do a, a dual engined uh, fighter, fighter aircraft. So again, let's, let's start out with a, a nice, uh, so would be a good cockpit for this. I'll just, let's just use a Cobra cockpit because this is has air intakes. It's easy. It's simple. We'll just put a little nose cone on it. Again, this won't be like an actual fire plane. Like it won't be putting guns, radar, that type of stuff. And again, that will add to your weight. And also, make sure you always uh, kind of take that into account. For normally, what I do is just take a. Actually, I'll I'll just I'll do that to start. Just do a normal uh. more standard here this is more kind of older but again you just, uh, just take something like this and then you can just slap a slap a radar cone on the front easy as that otherwise you have to jump usually uh you know make a little uh storage space put a radar in there it's, it's just problems problems indeed so again we will we'll start with this now again we'll be doing a two engine design so I'm just gonna make to make it simple. I'm just gonna use uh, just the Mark II parts. So once we can find those, I totally scroll past them. Do that. So we'll, we'll leave them like that. Cause we'll we'll put air intakes in later. I'll just swap mine to liquid fuel. Yeah, this will be a very very heavy plane, <laughs> but. Actually, we don't have to make it heavy, though. We can 
we'll just we'll actually drop some fuel because again weight is a factor that we have to take into consideration so always remember that weight is your enemy <sighs> again as I said in the last video for those that you know have watched it uh, you always kind of you're always making trade-offs when building aircraft so you you want to you want to be mindful of kind of what you're dealing with, what you're what you're putting on, because again, you know, just strapping on more engines, more fuel, more everything doesn't always make it better. That's definitely a lesson that I've learned with building rockets. Is you know, bigger is not always better because you get to a point where you're just too heavy that you're all the extra fuel is dragging you down even more. So again, we will use you know, again, use high performance engines, and also just. I would say again, if you're using, especially if, well, I would say especially if you're using mods, use aircraft that, um, and use engines that suit you best. Now, in this case, you know the big, I would say the two big engines that we'll really be dealing with are you know the B9 turbojets for comparison. You can also use whiplashes, though generally those don't make for good fighter aircraft because they have low, kind of crappy low speed performance. Or the Panthers. Actually, in this case, we'll use Panthers just because they have vectoring abilities. Now, vectoring is not always better now granted vectoring will give you lots and lots of maneuverability just by that alone but funny fact my f-15 active is a worse fight which is you know again an f-15 that's saying all right we're going to make this as maneuverable as possible is actually not as good as the base aircraft <laughs> fun fact if you strap you know if you replace the engines with you know afterburn turbo you know these uh vectoring afterburners and uh put little canards on front your plane isn't as good surprisingly but yeah so we have that all in order now let's get on to wing design and nice errant takes let's we'll kind of cram some errant takes in here make it look somewhat cool so again we'll be doing kind of big big delta wing design doing it fighter mafia style so <laughs> actually i thought of something fun Again, this actually, you know, this will, this should turn actually turn out pretty well given, given the amount they'll be going into it. Uh, so, yes, I'm thinking up, I have an evil design in my mind that will almost certainly make this in, I want to say overpowered, but for lack of a better term, overpowered aircraft. And that secret is we take one of these, do that, and then you do that. And now we have an X Wing. Kind of. Nah. So actually I got the thought from a well me and my friend would do, you know, me and the Nate Hacker would do air battles. He built a I'll have to dig it up again, it was a small X winged aircraft, and I'm like you you pretty much built a biplane, and that's I'm like you can't do that. You know that just makes where you're a lot more maneuverable. But he's like, then why don't you do it? I'm like, because I built a historical aircraft, and I you know, no historical aircraft does that. I should do that. So finally, I did, and it worked out very very well. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. That's uh, it's that. No, again, we'll now put on very very big canards on the front. So. Again, this is a pretty much an over-the-top aircraft. Um, feel free to replicate if you want. Uh, <laughs> but again, you know, the idea is have large amounts of wing loading, have large amounts of you know maneuverability, big engine, you know, very powerful engines, you know, low weight. So again, you see, this isn't. It's a pretty simple craft. There isn't a whole lot to it. Again, it has a. It's a decent amount of fuel. Actually, I could make this in theory even shorter. Well, let's make it long because it looks cool. But again, so where are those tail connectors? Well, I'll use standard canards. Use standard canards for the car canards we want to use. Why not? Hmm. Looks like we'll have to actually modify this a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's actually pretty much perfect center of mass. 
Alright, now let's just strap some landing gear on it and we'll call it a day. Do the big medium one. Another uh, design feature I'll say is always try to reduce drag on things. So again, you don't want stuff sticking out. So you try to tuck stuff in like landing gear. That's actually in this case we'll have landing gear on the wings that we won't be able to do that for. And that won't be as good, but again, the price we pay for fa having fabulous aircraft. Let's just check the radio on this. Did I almost do this perfectly? Huh? That actually, uh, that's, that's good. Because we want to pitch up a little bit. We'll start up a little bit. So again, uh, let's call it X-Wing Fighter. So again, you know, how to build, you know, big fighter mafia aircraft is again, you know, use those kinds of ideas to build a plane that is again not only going to be you know light but you know have a lot of engine power a lot of maneuverability are those are those actually no, maybe those are, I don't know, I think they're angled inward but you know who cares it's all good yeah. move that gear up as the engineer once said Move that gear up. Uh, that gear is actually kind of. I mean, we don't want to. need to turn that outward. Oh, yeah, that gear is slightly tilted inward. Yeah, that would cause instability. That's another uh, thing is that can cause gear instability is if they're angled inward and or outward that can be bad so yeah if your aircraft again is ever like you just kind of like wobbling around the one runway that could be why is your i would say first uh thing to look at is landing gear especially when landing if you're if it does that when landing it's definitely your landing gear or you just have some uh like i would check like your tailplane like your you, like your uh your center of lift is probably off center yeah, that is you know along the center line of the aircraft otherwise again i would check uh you know, wing surfaces you know uh, engine thrust you know and see if one's producing more than the other see if there's like any parts that be would be potentially getting in the way uh, do we not have enough uh yes we do not have enough air he's not making enough air And flaws in the design. Okay, see, so yeah, this thing's. Maybe it's a little too maneuverable. Again, I'll see. I will need larger things. Now, again, so this aircraft is what's doing is super maneuverable, which means it's able to maneuver outside if it's, it's pretty much what's aerodynamically possible using control surfaces. And that, it pretty much means that's thrust factoring. That's really what super maneuverable renewable really comes down to now when it comes to super maneuverable aircraft you are going to want to be very very careful with again with you know that sort of mass and a lot of times you actually will want to put it back a little bit i even forgot to adjust that again an aircraft like this it just has such a high amount of um, uh, just maneuverability given its control surfaces and that type of stuff that you probably would want to actually use kind of Adjust things a little bit. Make sure it's all fair and balanced. Okay, we'll need to add more air intakes. Actually, I'll just make them bigger. That's what scaling's for. Hooray! Uh, do, 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 move these back in. Definitely not part stuffing. I would not consider that part stuffing. It's just it's aesthetics. That's what makes it good. So again, you know, you want to make a plane that's well balanced and you know with thrust you know weight lift also stable because then stability is what at the end of the day what will get your kills because it doesn't matter how man how fast your plane can turn how fast it can go you know how light and nimble it is if it's not able to get a good lineup on its target if it's constantly wavering around and it's not able to you know get that good shot you aren't gonna win you might you know you're probably gonna lose you know, 
battle will probably end up coming to what the heck is without there? Probably just need to put like a subsonic air intake on as well on top, just because these are supersonic air intakes. I don't think they perform as well in these guns. You know. Cool. Problems, but yeah. So you see that aircraft again? You kind of it has a little bit of a, a little bit of a jig to it. So again, that's a case where we would want to add probably some, you know, some more lifting surfaces, you know, give it a little more, give it more lift. Stability actually is not too bad. Like as you see, now it's it's not flipping out. We aren't able to just kind of exceed now again there. We didn't get as good maneuverability. And again, that at this point, we're going at low speeds. So, oh, yeah. Had a bit of an engine flame out. That's, we don't like that. Engine flame outs aren't fun. Now again, if you do go into like a flat spin, you engine flame out, that type of stuff, again, super you know, when you have the thrust vectoring, that can be really useful. Again, stuff like that can happen. And actually, I probably should put on a, ooh, dang, that was cool. Um, again, I don't have a rudder on this, and that's because these are kind of angled up and downward, so. And if I had made them more of an X, it'd probably be more stable, but again, yeah, see, now we're, now we're starting to get into it. So, see, we revised the design, so you gotta make more. So now we'll add a rudder to the aircraft just to help with yaw, because that's act this actually has no yaw control. So I kind of forgot a rudder. I meant to put one on, and I'm just like, oh, who needs one? Uh, do, 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 do. So, yeah, it's kind of live stream going. And again, I know this is, you, if you're watching this whole video, I, I know it's long, I'll, I'll, I definitely will try to section it off to make it more palatable, because again, don't want to, don't want to bore you guys too much. I know it's, oh, your time is precious. Uh, we'll see the simple Delta Deluxe winglet, because I don't really feel like doing anything else in that, that will work pretty well. Yeah, perfect. Perfection at its finest. So, we need more wing loading. What better way to add more wing loading than another wing? No, we aren't going to make a freaking... Actually, why not? Why not make a tri-fighter? A tri-fighter, uh, an ARC-170. If you don't know what that is, watch Star Wars The Clone Wars, or just watch the prequels. It's a fantastic spacecraft. Probably a little over-designed in my mind, in my opinion, but uh, you got three clones in for Kleistic, including a tail gunner. Like, what, what are you doing? Especially because it was meant as reconnaissance plane. But I digress. So back to our, our simple simple Kerbal designs. Because that's what, that's what we focus on here. We don't care about anything else. Now again, in some cases, you know, you can't always be strapping on wings, so again, you can also do what, you know, what I did before, and that's make kind of a box, well, box wing is actually, that's a little different, but kind of box in your, you know, your, uh, your engines and fuselages and whatnot. Now in this case, you know, if you're using Mark II parts, it generally won't work as well, but if you're using, you know, if you have like a center line and then you like kind of have like the side air intakes, like my F-15, you know. That could be a good idea, because you can say, oh, I'm trying to make it so it looks cleaner. At the same time, I get more lift out of it. So, yeah, we'll see what this can do. Oh, I should also... Oh, forgot the... Actually, I'll... I forgot the, the air intake. Also, I probably should set those engines to hotkey. Just make it a little bit easier to test. But yes, 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 yes. And if you guys have any other ideas, you know, for tutorials that you want me to do, just, uh, you know, thoughts on fighter design, you know, if you have any questions you want me to, like, look over design, you know, just send me a picture in the craft file. Oh, and when you send the picture, make sure that you have the center of mass and center of lift, because, and kind of describe the problem you're having, or just, like, things you want me to enhance, you, you would like to be enhanced. Because that can generally say a lot. You know, the pictures pictures are very much worth a thousand words, especially when it comes to these types of things. So again, uh, air intakes. It's just a simple air scoop. 
Uh, there we go. By Vacco. If it weren't for the cockpit, I'd say this thing looks pretty cool. Yeah, it looks kind of more retro. Is that kind of retro sci-fi design? So yes. <laughs> oh, and if you do want to battle starfighters, that is something I am currently working on. So at one point, I may I even open up like a separate series or something like that where we fight them and miss. And it, my separate, uh, I actually have a save file that kind of became a main for aircraft creation, but. I actually launched a craft to min miss so that I would be able to, in theory, spawn aircraft on it. Now, right now, Vessel Mover is being mean, so... Oh, looks like we forgot to set our gear properly. Who cares? We are... We're super movable. No one cares about that. Oh. <laughs> wow, this thing can really turn. Yeah, we're already enduring like 11 Gs. Now, I'll say one flaw with this design is all these wings add in a lot of drag. And that's definitely something you want to take into consideration. And that's kind of where, like, you know, the more boxed in wing designs can be nice because they're, they're kind of stuffed inside of stuff. Now, you know, obviously, we're still able to maintain, you know, supersonic flight. The controls actually, I think the controls are just reversed. Oh, that was interesting. When I, so when the aircraft flipped out, I was actually giving it the opposite commands. I have, I have experienced this only a few times. It's actually funny because I will just turn those. Uh, let's see if we turn the pitch off these on these ones off. So we're trying to get more stability, more wing loading with less maneuver. Yeah, that 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 solves the problem. You'll need that. These will just be for aesthetics. Those can be our flaps, and those actually probably would be flaps. If this, if we're doing proper aircraft design. So again, very new old plane now. It does have. I, I think that's also just because of the engine that turns at high speed. It can turn a lot and then not really follow through. See, and this is. It's not. I would say this isn't probably the best fighter. Like, I, I'm, I'd be curious to see how this, this goes up against my F 15. Because then this does still have a bit of a catch. Like, I probably should throw in some more stability into it. Also, I, I forgot. I didn't even put in air brakes. So. Something you need. Deploy those. Get air brakes. Yes, yeah, thing, yeah. Yeah, it definitely has a little bit of instability in there. So, again, it's an, it's an alright plane, but again, this is just more for, for demonstration purposes. Show off, kind of. Oh. He was just all my aircraft recently, just want to freaking drift around the runway. That could be the next next Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious Kerbal Drift. Alright. Again, that is the uh that is the how you know, building a fighter, the fighter mafia way. Again, it focuses on, you know, lift, thrust, and weight to uh, increase, you know, thrust to weight ratio and wing loading. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, please add them in the comments below. Uh, you know, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, once I do start up the battle league, you know, after I get back from break, uh, I'll, I will again, I'll, you know, I'll look over everyone's planes, you know, approve, approve them all. If it doesn't go through, I, mean, I should probably should put this in the normal video as well. But if you, if your craft isn't in it, I will generally let you know. Otherwise, if I, if you don't get a reply from me and you don't see it at some point, uh, I probably forgot about it and just send send me an email, and just be like, hey, maybe you forgot my my thing. That's if I get lots of emails, I'm assuming. Early on, I probably won't get a whole lot, but... And, yeah. Remember to hit that like button, you know, subscribe. In the little right-hand corner. Where Jeb would be, you'll find my little call sign Nautilus emblem. And then, you know, remember, always keep that pointy side forward. Thanks for watching.